In this video, we're going to take a look at C system calls. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how to open and read files. So generally, a system call is a way to be able to get resources from the operating system. In this example, we're requesting to open a file and be able to read it. And the reason why we really start with files is because for one, most people are familiar with files on an operating system. And for two, in Linux, most of the system resources are actually represented as files. Things like sockets, things like pipes, they're all just files. And we'll see these types of resources later on. So understanding how to open and read files is gonna be a really helpful type of idea, as well as writing to files, which we'll talk about in future videos as well. Now to be able to do system calls, one of the best resources that you're going to have is the Linux manual, specifically the system calls manual. This manual will give you a lot of really good information about system calls. And as you can see, they're really in depth. I'm going to be showing you a lot of the most basic introductory ideas, the things that you really need to get up and running and the most common types of ideas. But these are great references to be able to dig deeper into system calls. So I want to show you these resources because I want you to understand where I actually get the information from when I'm talking about system calls and where you can also find out more about the system calls as you're starting to learn. So let's start off with opening files. When you open a file in a system call format, what's going to happen is you're going to use this open function here, which comes in really two main uh, types. The first type has two arguments, path name and flags. The path name is the location of the file that you wish to open. So we'll see what that path name generally looks like as we're going through some examples, but generally it's just the location of the file that we're looking to open. The flags are telling the operating system what we want to do with that file. So for instance, if you wanted to open a file just to read from it, you would provide the read only flag for this. And that would tell the operating system we want to open this file specifically just to read it. And you'll see that as you scroll down here, there's actually a long list of flags. So it's this list right here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different flags that we can actually specify for this system call. And generally we'll talk about a few of them as we're going through these videos and working with files, but just know that you have a full reference inside of these manual pages to be able to work with as well if required. Now, the second way that we can call open has this third optional argument in it, which is called mode. When you open a file, you can specify an option to say that you want to create the file if it doesn't already exist. If you do this, this mode parameter is required in order to determine what permissions should be set on that file. So these would be the typical Linux permissions for like who can read, write, and execute the file itself. This way, it's able to create the file with the desired permissions that you need. So that's the way that these two function calls work. Now, both of these functions are going to return back some sort of value. And that value is what is known as a file descriptor. It's an integer value, and it uniquely identifies the file that you have opened. And generally, the idea is that the operating system keeps track of the file descriptors and their associated files. And whenever you do another function, like say read, what you do is you provide a file descriptor so that the operating system knows which file you're trying to you know, read from or write to. So that's generally the reason why we have this file descriptor. It's a unique identifier that lets the operating system identify the file that we're working with. So in this case, FD is the file descriptor. So when we read a file, we provide this file descriptor as the first argument, and then we provide a buffer. The buffer is essentially some memory that's allocated that we're able to place what we've read from the file into. So we read from the file into the buffer. Now a buffer in C will have a fixed size to it typically. And because of that, we can specify how much we want to read from the file. So for instance, if my buffer has 20 bytes available in it, I can tell the system call to read 20 bytes of data. That way we don't overflow our buffer by accident. So we're able to specify exactly how many uh, you know, bytes we actually want to read from the file. The read function returns back an integer value, which says how many bytes it read from the file. This value will almost always be equal to count. In terms of regular files that we're working with right now, there's really two cases where it won't be equal to count. The first is that it will be equal to zero when it is at the end of the file, so there's nothing left to actually read. It can also potentially be less than count in situations where there isn't that number of bytes remaining in the file. So if I try to read 20 bytes, there's only 16 left, we would expect to get back just 16 instead of 20. 
So those are the main ideas of what we're seeing with read. Now, the final thing that I just wanna show you here in the synopsis is that you have this include. It tells you where this function is located. So read is in unistd.h, and then this one here is in fcntl.h. So those are the two locations of these. So understanding that, let's take a look at a really simple example. In this simple example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a file, I'm going to read that file, and I'm gonna print out the contents that I read. So to do that, what I need to do is include the different libraries that I need. So I need fnt or fcntl.h, right? I need stdio, which is gonna be used for just printing data out from the file. And I'm going to need this here, unistd.h. Now, in order to read files, we need a buffer of some sort. And that buffer is going to have a fixed size associated with it we're going to define the buffer size as a constant. So I'm doing a define a buffer size, and then I can define it as really any sort of value that I would like. And generally the idea here is we want the size to be large enough that it's like reasonable to read through the file with as minimal system calls as possible. So generally, if my file is expected to be maybe 100 bytes in size, and I wanna read the whole file at once, I should set the buffer to 100 bytes in size, right? So we wanna make sure the buffer is big enough to contain the amount of data that we wanna read from the file. And we wanna make sure that we're reading from the file as efficiently as possible. So for this example, I'm gonna set it to 1024. It's really just kind of an arbitrary number. I know that the file that I'm gonna read is much smaller than that. So I'm just gonna read as much as possible to be able to you know, get everything from the file into the buffer. We can reduce this in size and we'll see different instances where we would reduce it in size to be able to get like a more controlled buffer size. But just as an example, this will suit us well. I'm gonna define a main function and I'm gonna to provide to it the command line arguments, which we do using these two arguments here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the first argument that's provided through the command line. And I wanna open this in read only mode. The way that I do that is I specify the flag O underscore read only like this. This flag, where I got this from, is from this open system call, right? So it's just one of the flags inside of here. If I look it up, it would be O underscore read only. And we should be able to see some information about it. You know, there's a lot of different like parts here that are inside of here, but generally O read only is going to be the read only flag. So it'll allow us to read from the file and that's the only operation that it's going to allow. So now what this is gonna do is it's going to take the first command line that we provide and it's gonna open that file in read-only mode. And just to show you this process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out the result of this, which will be FD, and we're just gonna see what that gives us. I'll add in a return zero just to let our application end. So let's take a look at what that gives us. So I'll clear this. I'm gonna GCC my main.c, and then I'm gonna do dot slash main, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the test.txt file that is inside of this directory. So dot slash main, and I just provide text.txt. And you see I get a result of three. What happened here was it took this, it used it in the open system call. So generally what happened was it took test.txt and it replaced it here in argv1 since it was the first command line argument. So it opened test.txt in read-only mode and then it printed out the file descriptor. The file descriptor, again, is the unique identifier associated with that file, which in this case is three. So three is the unique identifier that Linux has associated with our file. Now, what we could do is we could take that file descriptor and we can use it to actually read from the file. So first thing that I'm gonna have to do here, I'll just remove this print for now. I'm gonna define a buffer of characters. So it's I'm reading characters from the file and it's gonna be a buffer and the size of it is gonna be buff underscore size like this. Now, first off, we wanna make sure that the file descriptor actually is set to a valid value. So the open actually succeeded. So we're gonna say if FD does not equal negative one, if it equals negative one, it means that it failed to find the file. So I'm gonna have an else if that's just going to, for now print out uh, error opening file. And I'll have that return perhaps a negative one as a result, just to indicate that there was some sort of error, right? Or we could, we could return like any value, right? Like one, two, it doesn't really matter. Just return something other than zero. 
And just to show you what happens here, if I try to open a file that doesn't exist, for instance, what we'll see is that we'll get that error, error opening file. So do you see that when it tries to open a file that doesn't exist, it actually gives us a negative one as a result, which falls into this else statement here. Now, if we did succeed in opening the file, I want to read the file. So I'm gonna say ss size like this, underscore t, num read equal to read. Remember, read takes in three arguments, a file descriptor, a buffer to read the data into, and a buffer size. Now, something really important here is that when we read from a file, a null terminator is not added to the string automatically. That's because C doesn't know if it's the end of a string or if it's read like a number or what it's really read off of the file. So it doesn't null terminate it. So rather than reading buffer size, I'm gonna read buffer size minus one. The reason why I'm doing this is because when I go to print this, I need to add a null terminator to the end of it so that C knows where to stop printing the value out. Now, what we could see here is that when we read, it's gonna return back the number of bytes that it read into this variable here. If that's equal to zero, we've reached the end of the file. Otherwise, there's still more things to read. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a while loop. I'm gonna say while numread is greater than zero, buffer at numread, so we're gonna say buff at numread is equal to the null terminator. So we're adding a null terminator to the end of the buffer. And then I'm going to go ahead and print out what I read from the file. So it's present s slash n and then buffer like this. And then I'm simply gonna do another read. So I'm going to go ahead and read once again. And what's gonna happen here is basically when you read the first time, what happens is it moves like a pointer up in the file to point to like the next byte that it's ready to read. So we do the second read, it reads from where it left off last. So it keeps track of that for us. Now what's gonna happen here is basically, it does this first read and it would get back the number of bytes that it read. So say in this case, there was 1,024 bytes to read. It would get in 1,024 bytes, right? And then while that's greater than zero, it's gonna print out the value and then it's going to read again. Again, this will give us the number of bytes that it read. It will keep reading until it reaches zero, which indicates that it's at the end of the file. And then once it reaches the end of the file, that's the end of our program and we're done. So really main things to keep in mind here is this right here is just adding a null terminator to the end of what we read out of the file. That allows us to be able to print it using the printf command. Next to that, we're really just using these different system calls to be able to open and read the file. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how that works. So let's give it a file that actually does exist. And as you can see, it reads all the contents of the file and prints them out onto the screen. And with this, you've now written your very first C application that uses system calls. Now I'm gonna show you a lot more examples of working with opening, reading, and writing files. So don't worry if this seems a little bit complicated right now, things will get much easier as you continue to practice with system calls. So we'll continue to discuss a lot of these ideas and we'll continue to build up an understanding of them as we continue working with them. And eventually this will become very easy and intuitive to work with. For now, it's probably a lot of new information, but just you know, keep playing around with the read, try reading different files on your system, see how it works, get an idea of that. And then we'll continue to work with more files as we continue on in future videos. So with that, we'll end off here. And in the next video, I'll show you some other ways that we can work with reading files and building up more of an understanding of being able to read different files and different file types. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.